as it stands right now, this is the KD Plasma 6 release schedule. All of these dates are entirely subject to change, but assuming there are no major disruptions, no massive flaw is discovered, no massive bug, nothing like that, everything is going to be released on February 28th, 2024. But right now, November 22nd, we are in the middle of the KDE Plasma 6 Alpha, with Beta 1 beginning next week. I am not a KDE dev myself, but from the ones I've spoken to, it sounds like right now is a really, really exciting time. Whilst there have been updates to KDE over the past 10 years, the last time there was a major toolkit change was 10 years ago. Moving to a whole new toolkit is a really exciting time, and a lot of work still needs to be done. We've had months of blog posts from people like Nate Graham. We've had articles from Pharonix and others. We've had videos from people like me and Nico Loves Linux hyping up all of these exciting things that are being worked on. Right now is a super exciting time to care about the KDE project. And as noted by Nate Graham in a recent blog post, it's great to see lots of people running the Plasma 6 Alpha release, which has resulted in a spike of bug reports, as we had hoped and expected, so keep at it. Focus is already shifting to bug fixing now that most features are merged, with only a few days to go. And just a very quick look at the bug reports indicates that basically instantly. All of these right here are being worked on today. Then we have ones from yesterday, and the day before, and the day before that, and the day before that, and the day before that, and the day before that. Like, people are constantly working on this, people are constantly reporting issues, and things are being dealt with. Right now is the time to work on making the system as rock solid as possible, because whilst KDE might be in a fairly good state as a project today, that has not always been the case. I've done my research, and I'm sure some of you guys have been around on Linux for a long time. How many of you remember when KDE 4 came out? For any of you that don't, KDE 4 is the reason my projects like Trinity exist. Because it sucked, it was a buggy mess that was not ready to ship. And I can guarantee without a shadow of a doubt that nobody in the project wants that to happen again. And that's the reason why there is three months of alpha, beta, and release candle. Like this is a really, really long amount of time to do this. But it needs to be done to make sure everything is as stable as possible and ready for this big toolkit change. And as Nate said, this uptick in bug reports was hoped for and expected. I know a bunch of KDE devs, they're all great people, and I'm sure they're all great developers. And I say this in the nicest way possible. You can write code that is in your opinion, really great, it is completely bug free, you've written a great test suite, and it addresses what you think is every single problem that the code has. However, your code, like everybody else's, probably sucks. The second that, that code is in the hands of a real user, they are going to do something that you didn't expect. They are going to have a panel that has zero elements in it. They're going to press a hotkey that you didn't expect. They're going to have a file name that's a little bit too long. It's going to crash and explode. And hopefully, if they're a good alpha and beta participant, they're going to open up a bug report about it. And this is why there are three months. Because there's going to be a lot of those. And it's going to take quite a bit of time to iron out a lot of these issues. So hopefully when the average user gets it, when it's available on Kubuntu, when it's available on Fedora 40, then those problems are gone. And they have a much, much smoother experience. This is not exclusive to KDE. This happens in basically every project. A developer is constantly looking at the code. And that developer if they're trying to be a good actor, is trying to write good code. No developer is intentionally writing code that they know is buggy. So if they're committing it to the project, they think that it does everything that it needs to do. So it's really hard to step back away from that and then look at that code with an objective lens. Is there something wrong with this? Because if there was something wrong with it, you would have written it like that in the first place. That's where you need a fresh set of eyes looking at the code, and hopefully the people reviewing the code 
are that fresh set of eyes. And a lot of the time, they are, you update the PR, and then before it gets merged, it is dealt with. But sometimes, sometimes the reviewer doesn't notice the problem. And as that happens, bugs get introduced, regressions get introduced, and over time, issues like this crop up. There's also simply the fact that you cannot test every single hardware configuration. You might have, I don't know, an NVIDIA GPU, Intel CPU, and maybe if you have a bunch of hardware, you can test, you know, three, four, maybe five different configurations if you're really going hard with it. But what if there's some other weird setup that none of the developers are using that for some reason is breaking? What if there is a bug with FreeBSD laptops causing brightness control not to work? What if there is a bug with trying to bridge video into a video chat app, making use of X Wayland Video Bridge, and for some reason, X Wayland Video Bridge is just spawning a bunch of unnecessary instances? What if there is an issue with virtual keyboards causing them to render on top of various UI elements? Maybe there is a problem with really, really long file names causing the file search to break. Maybe someone has a Haswell CPU that is causing the desktop to just completely die and not even load. And what if there's a problem with the Oculus Snap where for some reason the printer list is just not being populated with the available printers? Those might seem like oddly specific issues to be used as an example. And that's because those are real issues that existed in the project. Backlight Helper implements support for the FreeBSD Backlight Interface. x on Video Bridge launches four instances at start. Virtual Keyboard overlaps some buttons at the bottom of the login screen. 25 plus character string without spaces search fails. Intel HD 4600 plus OpenGL plus KWIN equals can't load. This is a Haswell CPU. Printers not available in Ocular Snap. And all of these problems have been fixed. Fun thing about that Haswell CPU one, this is not a modern issue. This is one from 2015. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, David Edmondson, the absolute legend, after there hadn't been a message here for four years, just went and fixed the problem. This is not a problem that anybody reasonable is probably going to come across. Like, who is using a Haswell CPU. But this is the time where little issues like this get to be addressed. Most of these issues are super niche configurations that it's fairly unlikely a developer is actually going to test. But users actually do have these environments. Users are making use of FreeBSD on a laptop, are making use of x and Video Bridge, are making use of the virtual keyboard on the login screen, and actually reported the problem. Issues like this are exactly why it is so, so important to have people outside of the project actually messing with the software. And it doesn't stop at release, whilst the alpha and the beta are hopefully going to address a lot of the problems. Once it hits Kubuntu, once it hits Fedora, there is going to be even more configurations available and even more issues being addressed. This is why I've been warned by a couple of KDE developers, maybe don't swap the Plasma 6 as soon as it comes out, because on Arch it's going to be available, you know, basically as soon as the developers can actually compile it. It might be a little bit too soon then, maybe you want to wait until like, the first .1 or .2 release, because that's when a lot of those initial problems are gonna be ironed out. Right now the floodgates are just a little bit open, but as soon as that full release happens, it'll be wide open and there is going to be bug reports galore, and I am so very, very excited for it. There is going to be a lot of work for the KD developers to do, and I wish them the absolute best of luck. To finish off, I do want to mention that KDE is currently doing a Plasma 6 fundraiser. So their goal is to have 500 members paying over 100 euros a year. Right now, they're at 367. They are, you know, most of the way there. And they want to do it before the release of Plasma 6. So if you care about the project, if you want to see it get better, 
This is the simplest thing you can do. Now, obviously, not everyone has the money to do so. So if you want to get involved in other ways, whether that's writing code, whether that's doing translation, whether it's just answering things with a bug tracker, getting involved with the mailing list, discussing the ways that things can be done, check out the Getting Involved page. This is the best place to go. And unlike Gnome, which recently got the 1 million euro donation and also has the backing of Red Hat, you know, KDE could really do with some extra support. Whether it's paying developers for their time and allowing people to actually be a full-time developer, whether it's having more presence at events, all of it means a better desktop for you. But that is going to be it for me. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you make use of Plasma? Are you excited for Plasma 6? Or maybe you're thinking of trying something else. I would love to know. So if you liked the video, Go like the video, and if you really like the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libero Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I think this might have been the quickest recording I've done in a very long time.